Look at this cute little glass. What is going on everybody and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today and this is a new series we are going to start called Single Barrel Saturdays. Now not a lot of people put out videos on Saturdays which is why I want to take over that market but at the end of the day this right here that we're going to be sipping on is 2XO. This is barrel number 26. This is the Gem of Kentucky Single Barrel Series coming from Dixon Deadman himself. Now I do have a little bit of information about this bottle right here because we did talk to Dixon Deadman a while back about these particular releases so let's get into it. I only have a two ounce sample because this was a very expensive bottle. We're going to talk about that as well. So we did a bottle split in my Patreon group. Check out the Patreon page. Link in the description below. Let's try this time for the traditional time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Let me tell you one more thing about this series. I'm only going to do it after a couple of drinks. I think it's a little bit more fair. Cheers, y'all. Holy shit. You don't even need a long one for this. That is delicious. So as I mentioned, I did have a couple of drinks tonight. These reviews are going to be a little bit more off the cuff. They're going to be a lot less edited, a lot less pristine than my traditional Wednesday reviews. I'm only going to do it for single barrels because you can't always get your hands on the exact single barrel that I have. That being said, this is 2XO, Gem of Kentucky, two times oaked by Dixon Denman. I can pretty much guarantee you that any of these, at least at initial release, are going to be delicious because Dixon Denman knows how to pick out a barrel. Now, two times oaked still has to hold true. So this is the only only Kentucky two times oaked or twice barreled single barrel if that makes sense to you but I got to tell you the color on this before I start on anything the color on this is perfect it's like a bronze orange in the light it's absolutely fantastic and my first sip the traditional sip was knock your socks off good I can promise you that so this bottle does come in at 108 proof. We're still going to go through price, taste, drinkability just because I think it'll be fun. But at 108 proof, this is an NDA. So Dixon Denman did sign an NDA saying he can't disclose who he actually sources the whiskey from, which is funny because I feel like companies doing that are trying to protect themselves. Like we don't want me, Bourbon of the Week, going out and buying a thousand barrels from Heaven Hill, blending it with a bunch of crap and then saying it's Heaven Hill dissolute. But Dixon Deadman obviously has a reputation with Kentucky Owl to say, hey, I'm pretty freaking good at what I do, so you don't really need to give me the NDA. Now, maybe he was just like, hey, for the first run through this or for now, we'll sign an NDA. But I will say it's a 35% rye mash bill. So who do we know in Kentucky that has a 35% rye mash bill that Dixon Deadman probably has connections with through his Kentucky Owl or through the whiskey sources anyway? I got to say, you can guess in the comment section below. I won't say it out loud. This glass right here is absolutely fantastic. I would say it might be, if I drank this in 2023, which I should have, it might be up there in like my top five of 20, 2023 drinks because it is that damn good. I got to tell you, Unforgotten is still my number one. Wild Turkey did their thing with that, but this right here is pretty damn good. So I'm going to give it a score when it comes to price, taste, drinkability, but I'm not going to put it on any type of list or anything like that because, again, you might get barrel number 66, and I don't know how that compares to barrel number 26, so I don't want you being all mad at me when you get a bad batch and I get the best batch. That being said... Dixon Deadman did say, and I heard this through the grapevine, aka Jason at Mash and Drum, that 20 through 30 was some of his favorite. It is not age stated. I'm going to guess that 8 to 10 year range if I had to guess, and it is 108 proof. So when it comes to drinkability, I'm going to say 7.0 if it drinks right at its proof. It's probably a little bit above that. Let's go like 7. I don't know, 6.5. 7.66 when it comes to drinkability on this. I don't need to give it a perfect score because it's not on the list. I don't want to get like super ahead of myself here, but this is really freaking good. I got to tell you, I have two more samples over there that I still have to get my brother-in-law and another guy in our patron, and I don't know if they're going to get their hands on them. I got to be honest, I might buy them out of their samples. I don't know if they're going to let me do that. Now, here's the deal on this bottle, and here's where I was a little bit hesitant on this. Now, Dixon Deadman is obviously one of the best in the game when it comes to the blending process. That being said, that doesn't mean that he's going to be able to pick out the best single barrels or does it? Now, I've done a single barrel picking process about four or five times now. For me, I get access to four, five, maybe six samples. They send me two ounce samples, four ounce samples, whatever it may happen to be. And then I get to pick the best of the best when it comes to that particular sample for my particular palate. Dixon Deadman probably has access to hundreds of thousands of barrels when it comes to this. I mean, he's using the barrels that I'm assuming he's also blending. So he's going through, he's trying something and he's saying that right there is special. 
keep that for the gem of Kentucky, which means if this is sourced from the company that I think it's sourced from and it's Dixon Deadman picking it and I know my palate kind of aligns with Dixon Deadman and people say all the time like, why would I pick a single barrel? Like who at Fine Wine and Good Spirits is picking the barrel? If Dixon Deadman was picking the barrels for Fine Wine and Good Spirits, people would buy them every single time. I've had a couple of Eagle Rares that were trash and I'm like, who's picking this? I don't know you. I don't know what your palate is like. I know Dixon Deadman palate and I know it's a damn good palate and I know I kind of align with it when it comes to his flavor profile. And then he's doing this two times oaking process and just everything about this is fantastic. This right here is delicious. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. Price though, the question is, is it worth it? $200 though, let's talk about it. That's something my daughter's been saying a lot lately. She's two years old and anytime I actually explain anything to her, she goes, talk about it, dad, dad. And I'm like, I, I'm, I, that's literally what we're doing. We're talking about it right now. Talk about it. I'm like, relax, okay? But this one, let's talk about it. $200. I did a bottle split. I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. $200 is a lot of money to drop on a bottle, especially a double barreled single barrel that's picked from somebody who blends. So I didn't know what to expect. Am I regretting it? Yes. I would buy this bottle all day at $200. It's a top five bottle for me of all time possibly. So would I spend $200 on it? Yes. Does that mean you're going to have the same experience with bottle number 28? I don't know. Bottle number 56? I don't know. The second batch of these after you find out these were so delicious and you couldn't get your hands on it. So they put out the second release and it's barrel number 372. Is that going to be as good? I don't know. That's why I'm not putting it on my Wednesday reviews. I've been drinking. I'm sorry. What I will say though, on this particular bottle right here, bottle number 26, 26, 26, I would spend $200 all day. I would buy this bottle five times out of five if I saw it sitting for $200. If anybody else sees barrel number 26 somehow sitting on your shelves, you buy it, you sell it to me for $200 all day. I'll take it. I promise you that. Taste, I'm going 9.26. Price, I'm going 8.57. It could obviously be cheaper, but that's where I'm going to put it. I don't even remember what I gave it when it came to drinkability, so we're not going to add these scores up for you, but that's where I'm going to put you on my bourbon review for our first single barrel Saturday. But Dixon, I'm not kidding. The offer obviously stands. If you want to pick out a Russell's Reserve single barrel or you're going to do a single barrel program through this 2XO series, I would love to be one of the first people to get their hands on that opportunity. Hit me up. You know where to find me. But in the meantime, make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Check out our Patreon page and our Discord. Both those links in the description below. Make sure you click that like and that subscribe button. Excuse me, I have to cough. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy. Stay trusting Dixon Denman when it comes to his single barrel picks. Cheers, y'all.